Hey everyone, Rob from the Progress Blog here, www.progressblog.blogspot.com. Hey, today we're going to review WWF Primetime Wrestling from March 16th, 1987. WrestleMania 3 is just two weeks away. Um, in case you're wondering why I don't have any reviews up for 3.9, I don't have that episode, and I'm not even sure if that episode exists. I don't know anything about it, so that's where we're at. Alright, let's move on to the show. The big story of the day is a gorilla making a trip to Andre the Giant's camp last week. Um, Yeah, he's going to be talking about it, and uh, apparently he didn't delete the footage that he said he had, uh, and uh, Heenan wasn't too happy about it. The first matchup was uh, Moondog Spot versus Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Um, Jimmy Hart was on commentary here, which is interesting, since he actually used to manage Moondog Spot down in Memphis. Uh, He didn't really pimp him, though, or show him as much as I expected. Hacksaw ended up beating Moondog Spot with the three-point stance clothesline. It was a pretty good hit, too. He uh, he jumped up, and uh, Spot took a really nice bump off of it. Um, Hacksaw was a little bit motivated here, and he was real new to the WWE episode. The crowd wasn't super into him yet, but uh, he was definitely trying, and you could see something was there. Um, you know, it was kind of about average, maybe a little bit better than average, but, you know, when you're dealing with, like, a Hacksaw-Jim Duggan match, it's kind of, you know... It's kind of pushing it, so I can deal with it. Heenan made some comments on Hacksaw, and we got a WrestleMania 3 report. Uh, Jimmy Hart told Bob Uecker about the hair match, and he said Piper would go down. Uh, Mary Hart met up with Bobby Heenan and Andre the Giant. Uh, Andre told her that she talked too much, and uh, yeah, she said she was just learning about wrestling, and she was annoying both of them. We got to some different promos then. Uh, Billy Jack Haynes said, WrestleMania 3, Hercules, we are going to see who the real master of the full Nelson is. Billy Jack just talked really weird here. I don't know. You, you could tell something was going on with him. Um, we got a Dream Team and Dino Bravo promo. Um, Dino Bravo said, I want to be there when you beat those guys at WrestleMania 3. He was talking about the Dream Team versus Rougeau's match. Um, next, we got the Hart Foundation with their newly acquired Danny Davis. And um, Jim Neidhart said, I can understand with the Bulldogs being upset, but what's with the burrito brother Santana? What's his problem? Um, but he was talking about the Bulldogs being upset that they just lost the tag team post to the Hart Foundation. And he wasn't saying it, but it was mostly because Danny Davis cost it. All right. Um, next up, we had the Killer Bees versus Mike Sharp and Tiger Chungli. They did an inset here. And... Um, Slick said, at WrestleMania 3, they going to make honey out the killer bees. He was referring to um, the Sheik and Nikolai Volkov, of course. Near the end, uh, Mike Sharp loaded up his um, his wristband, his wrist type thing, and I tried to nail Brunz, uh, I think Blair or Brunzel with it, and I ended up nailing Tiger Chung Lee. And then um, the killer bees did a drop down with, the, um, with a very nice drop kick from Brunzel, and they finished him off. Um, it was okay, you know, nothing too special at all, but uh, I like the finish, and, you know, could have been worse. Uh, the Killer Bees did a really lame uh, jumping uh, high five after. Um, next, uh, Gorilla grilled Heenan for spending his time focusing on Andre for WrestleMania three. He was saying he wasn't focusing on Bundy and all of his other men who were busy that night. Uh, Honky Tonk Man get, did a promo. Honky said that uh, he didn't like Jake the Snake making fun of him you know, just for the way he dresses and talks. And he said basically that Snake was uh, making fun of his mama, and so uh, he had to do something about it. Um, Honky also kind of threatened Gene. He said that uh, Peggy Sue, his girlfriend, didn't like the way Gene was talking about her, and uh, she was going to do something to Gene. Gene laughed somewhere around here, um, near the end when he started talking about Peggy Sue, and he had to turn his head and laugh because he was just dying out there. All right. Um, Yeah. We had uh, Bobby on the phone with uh, his lawyer, and uh, they were trying to see if uh, Gorilla could use the Andre training camp footage or not. And, um, yeah, they let let him. So later on the show, he said he would do it. Uh, Next up, we had Outlaw Ron Bass versus Special Delivery Jones. This happened a few weeks ago, um, and it was, you know, I guess it was better than I expected, but still wasn't that good. Uh, Bass just totally controlled this one. you know, in control the whole time. He worked the abdominal stretch and worked the arm a little bit and uh, just beat up on poor Jones uh, en route to winning with a back with a blackjack mulligan style back elbow. 
there were tons of boring chants here from the crowd, and uh, I don't know, it just didn't really interest me at all. Um, SD mostly sold before he got put away. Uh, Gorilla and Heenan talked about betting on WrestleMania 3, and Heenan said he didn't bet, and then Gorilla hinted that he bet with some mobster about something, and now he owes him dinner. The next match was uh, Don Morocco and Ace Cowboy Bob Orton versus Golden Boy Danny Spivey and Jerry Allen. Gorilla called um, um, Orton. He said, uh, what a technician. He has the excellence of execution. Uh, th this match was mostly Bob Orton beating up on Jerry Allen. Those were the big highlights anyway. Uh, he had a really good uh, drop kick with a nice boot to the face. He went for a Vader bomb and uh, Allen put his knees up. And um, yeah. Ace ended up getting the win over Allen here with a superplex. The The match was okay. Uh, nothing special to it. And nothing really bad. But, uh, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen Orton do more bumping. Orton was really, really good at facials and bumping and stuff like that. After the match, the heels tried to double-team the faces. And um, Danny Spivey ended up getting Fuji's cane and he cleared out the heels. Next up, we had uh, Pedro Morales versus Jimmy Jack Funk. Um, if you're kind of wondering why Pedro, even though he was a former champion, he didn't really do anything of note in the 1980s, and at least toward the end of the decade once Hulk came around, that's a pretty good example why. Uh, he had a match last week on primetime, it wasn't very good, and his match this week wasn't very good either. Um, just kind of works like an old guy, you know, he just punches and no real fire or energy or anything, just nothing of interest. Um, of course he got the win here with the backbreaker, um, it was short, not that good, uh, and a lot of Pedro punning and punching, and Jimmy Jack didn't get to do much at all. Uh, Heenan didn't talk with Gorilla and said Hogan was tough and it wouldn't be an easy fight, but um, Andre would win at WrestleMania 3. We got Jake the Snake Roberts interview. He said about Honky, he took his best shot and didn't get the job done. What's a wounded animal like? You tell me. Um, Jake was pretty upset, and, uh, he was really looking forward to getting his hands on Honky. He honestly didn't even think that, uh, Honky Tonk Man would even show. Next up, we had a nice little surprise. We had, uh, the WWF Women's Tag Team Championship match. We had, uh, Judy Martin and Leilani Kai versus Velvet McIntyre and Angie Man Manelli. Um, this was before the Glamour Girls era, so it was just Judy Martin and Leilani Kai. Um, this honestly ended up being a really good match. Uh, the faces rushed the heels uh, early, and they hit some nice moves. Uh, Velvet was just super spunky and moving so fast and everywhere. And I really liked that. Um, she even had a really nice bridge out of a pin. Um, Manelli kind of got fiery too, and the heels, are, as always, were really good. Um, Judy Martin is just such a great bumper, and I really love to watch her matches. She's kind of like a poor version of the female Ric Flair, and... She's just a good worker. She's an old, tough brawler, but uh, she bumps, and she makes people look good. Um, the finish here was really good. Uh, Judy Martin got a nasty powerbomb on Angie Minnelli. And this is the 80s WAF, so we're not talking powerbombs now. I mean, you didn't see this much. Um, this was a pretty good match, and the crowd even got into it. And that's saying something for the crowd to get into something that the women were doing. So uh, I think that speaks. Um, Velvet was really good here, and she brought tons of fire, and Minnelli did too. And um, they even got a near fall or two in this one. So uh, I like this. This was a nice hidden gem for, of the women of the WAF. And I uh, gave this one three stars. Um, to close the show, we had Gorilla Monsoon at Camp Andre. Um, basically, it was Andre and Heenan fumbling around in the woods because Heenan didn't want to show Gorilla the camp. All right. So uh, overall thoughts. Uh, the show wasn't really that good. The women's match was really good, and I enjoyed that. But uh, the whole Camp Andre thing and the video from that was a real waste of time. And I don't know what the point of it was. It made no sense, and you know, it just showed crap that didn't happen. So I didn't like it. Um, I don't really recommend this episode. It wasn't that good, but I did like the women's match. All right. To see um, picks and gyps from this. To see all the picks and gyps from this review. Check out www.progressblog.blogspot.com.